And what do you mean by that about real incomes, profits, and the consumer? How do you view the macro right now? Right. So, so incomes might be going up, but they're not keeping pace with the uh, cost of living adjustments. And so that's why you're seeing in the third quarter of last year, 47 million new uh, consumer credit accounts uh, were opened. You're seeing 15 percent decline in retail, 15 billion dollar decline in retail sales. Uh, I saw a figure that 40 percent of Americans are having a difficult time paying their basic household expenses. Uh, and since consumer spending is 70 percent of the economy, that becomes problematic on co corporate profits. Uh, and again, this is happening when, you know, wage growth was high. So anytime wage growth is high, it constrains corporate profits and then they start to lay people off. And that's what you're starting to see now. And, and I, you know, you're right. And I first off, it's like I know the data on inflation is coming down, but I don't know about you, Ivory. Whenever I look to buy anything, I'm like, that is not right. cheap. Right. That said, I hate the worst part of this job is when I have to go on the air like I just did before you and say sales are at a record high. Oh, and by the way, that same company is laying off a few thousand people. It stinks. Nobody wants anyone to lay people off. But you wonder what message they are sending by, by doing that. Are they predicting a downturn? Well, again, if you look at the employment cost index, it was somewhere around 5%. Uh, so those are at elevated levels. And, and so, you know, wages are, are you know, ex are the biggest expense a company has. So they're laying people off because it's constricted corporate profits. Um, and, and I don't know that, it, and that it's, it's going to, you know, moderate uh, anytime soon. So, so they're, they're laying people off because of what it's done to corporate profits. You're going to see corporate profit earnings growth be negative this quarter. I imagine it'll be negative next quarter as well until we get to the second half of the year. But is it possible this rally that we've seen to start the year is because things maybe aren't as bad as the worst estimates? I mean, I don't. Why? Yeah. Why have we been so strong the last three weeks? Well, uh, so so there's an assumption that you know the, the Fed's going to moderate how often or how much they raise interest rates. Uh, but I, I caution investors to know that during the dot-com crash, we had 10 or 11 rallies where the market went up by more than 10%, right? A couple of times it went up by 20%. NASDAQ ultimately declined by 79%. And so let's be clear, we, we've had a 25-year uh, regime of artificially low interest rates that has been reversed. And so think about, you know, the present value of future cash flow for a company. When interest rates go down, go up, the present value goes down. This applies to internal rate of return, the cap rate. Uh, and I think what hasn't really been discussed as much is the refinance problem that the government's going to have. Let, let's not forget that we've got over $24 trillion in debt held by the public. About $7, seven trillion of that has to get refinanced in fiscal year 2023. That's March of 2022 to March of 2023. If the government has to pay an additional 175 yeah. basis points, that's $120 billion a year in interest payments for one year. And that's 15% of our defense budget. So we talk about consumer spending being 20% of the GDP. The government spending is about 20%. Uh, so, so we've got some real issues at hand, not yeah. just with the consumers and earnings, but also how we're going to keep spending the money that we do.